we're going to talk about some very, very simple ideas relating to the sensory system. Um, we're going to think about the general nature of sensation and then look at what you might think of as the basic units of sensation, that being sensory modalities. So let's start off by thinking about sensation and splitting it up into two broad categories. We have general sensation and we have special sensation. Now, the remit of the section on the somatosensory system primarily focuses on general sensation. Special sensation specifically refers to um, modalities such as hearing and vision. But we're going to be focusing very much on general sensation, which generally refers to sensations that are detected through stimulation of the body wall. That could be the skin or the mucous membranes, for example. Now, general sensation can be further subdivided into somatic and visceral. Somatic sensation is characterised by being consciously perceived generally, whereas visceral sensation uh, is generally not consciously perceived. And a large part of the visceral sensory system is related to maintaining homeostasis. For example, the uh, carotid body is a part of the visceral sensory system. But the key distinction here is that the somatic sensory system is conscious and the visceral sensory system generally is unconscious. However, strong stimulation of visceral structures, um, for example in appendicitis, can lead to referred pain in the somatic distribution. Now, having categorised some basic ideas on sensation, it's worthwhile now thinking about the types of sensory experience that we uh, perceive. So, if we create a new page, what we're going to be talking about is the idea of sensory modalities. Now, as I said, sensory modalities can be considered to be the basic units of the sensory system, the most fundamental aspects of sensory experience. And sensory modalities... Um, exist because we have a variety of different receptors okay we have a variety of different receptors each receptor is responsible for detecting a particular modality all right so think of modalities as the basic unit of sensation so let's let's list some modalities so the first modality we might think about is temperature so at the moment I'm sat in quite a comfortable room, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. However, if the temperature decreased I would be able to detect that, and if it increased I'd be able to detect it. So temperature is a modality, uh, and this is detected by a variety of temperature receptors. Um, I'm not really interested in the molecular basis of sensory transduction, although this is a very interesting field. Um, but for the purposes of this unit, um, all it's sufficient is to, for you to appreciate that there are different modalities, but you don't have to know the details of the different um, molecular means of detecting these modalities. Another modality we might want to consider, something we all experience, is pain. All right? So pain is a, a very important sensory modality, particularly for, for making sure that you stay alive. You want to be able to avoid painful stimuli. A third modality um, would be pressure. Okay, Pressure, or we could call this a crude touch. Okay, So this is the ability, say, to detect someone prodding you, for example. What other modalities can we think about? Well, 
another one that's uh, that, that we are all able to um, experience is vibration. All right, so many of us um, feel, for example, our mobile phone in our pocket vibrate. Sometimes we even feel it if it's not vibrating. Uh, but vibration is a bona fide sensory modality. Another one um, is fine touch. All right, so we can discriminate this from coarse or crude touch. Um, we can think about fine touch, for example, if I ask you to close your eyes, I place an object in your hand and ask you to identify that object, you're actually using the modalities of fine touch to determine the properties of that object in order to identify what it is. So fine touch is distinct from crude touch. Then we have um, another modality known as proprioception proprioception and proprioception is a very important modality because this enables us to know where our limbs are in space we have structures within our muscles known as muscle spindles which report on muscle length and we also have a variety of receptors in our joints so proprioception is crucial for our appreciation of where our limbs are in space and the final modality that I want to mention to you is two-point discrimination. And two-point discrimination is the ability to resolve two simultaneous stimuli on, for example, the skin. And the way that you can assess that clinically is, for example, to take a paper clip, to bend it into um, a V-shape, and then you can vary the distance between the two prongs. You touch the patient's skin and ask them whether they experience a single stimulus or two stimuli. And what you find if you play about with this is that certain parts of your body, for example the fingertips or the lips, have um, a fantastic ability to discriminate two points. You can make those two prongs very close together and you're still able to resolve them as two points. However, other parts of the body, for example, the skin on the back or the elbow, have very poor um, two-point discrimination, um, so that you would have to spread those two points much further apart. Now, I have listed these modalities in this order for a specific reason. And that reason is that these modalities are carried in different pathways within the spinal cord. So this set of modalities here, which I have indicated in red, are carried by the um, spinothalamic pathway. So the spinothalamic system carries the modalities of temperature, pain, pressure and crude touch. Whereas the modalities indicated here in green are carried by a different system within the spinal cord, this being the dorsal column system. And we're going to elaborate much more on the structure of these two separate systems, but for the time being it's sufficient for you to appreciate that modalities, different modalities do travel along different trajectories through the nervous system on their way up to the brain. Now, one final point before we finish this is I just want to say that, you know, we've talked about these individual modalities and we've stressed how these can be thought of as the basic currency of the somatosensory system. Um, what about experiences such as wetness, stickiness, for example? Are these modalities? And the truth of the matter is that they are not modalities. They are actually composed of different components. Um, so, for example, the feeling of wetness maybe has a component of coldness um, as well as um, other subtle effects on the skin. So, so wetness, stickiness, uh, they're not pure modalities. They're combinations of these different individual units. Okay, that's all I've got to say.